Hello, everyone. Um, anyone who knows me knows that public speaking is not my thing. Um, so I'd like to thank a couple people, Mr. Ewing, Mr. Schrader. If you see me slouch to the floor, it's because my knees, I'm trying not to buckle them. Okay, shoulders down, breathing from the stomach. Um, can you hear all right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I also like to thank Michael, call the name, where is he, um, for helping me, and two people helped me with my PowerPoint, Mrs. Khan and Mr. Boyle. So. Today I'm just sharing my own, I guess, journey with words and mistakes, which I know is our chapter reading for this month. And just sharing a couple things that over the years have stuck out for me and what I have learned. Falling pan. <laughs> so words and falling pan. My mother Marie, Firstborn generation in America, think Greece, had many, many profound sayings, words. Most of them sounded much better in Greek, but I share one today in English as best I can. Quote, I would rather be cut by a knife than be cut by words. The wounds from the knife can heal, but the wounds of words may never. End quote. I have spent a lifetime pondering on this notion, words. Over time, I added my own piece to it, that it's not just the words themselves that wound, but also how the words are conveyed that can deepen the wound. I quote Mr. Roy's statistics about communication that I learned this week at Think Week. Words make up 7% of the message, facial expressions 38%, and body language 55% but it's all the message. I grew up the youngest of three brothers. We argue a lot, always have, still do, and probably will continue to do. We are Greek, and my family at least was and is a group of yellers, and I can yell with the best of them. Where's Ed Sarah? <laughs> he knows. <clears throat> it has taken me some time in many words, to temper this trait, and I still fail at times. About a month ago, the IB program hosted the annual IB Diploma Prep Award Ceremony, and as is custom, invited recent SEN IB alumni to speak to the current IB class. One SEN graduate speaker, Ali Parasha, I'm saying his name wrong, not the best picture, is now a senior at Loyola, majoring in biology and going on to medical school. Ali was more than the ideal student, bright, motivated, focused, with an incredible appetite for learning. He would stand in class many days as a way of dealing with his own intensity and or excitement. Now our class was biology in room 310, and this was before the cooling system was installed at Sen. 310 would boil all year. So picture many fans throughout the room. Many fans. Coolia's had an early menopause. <laughs> After the IB event this year, Ali came down to room 106 talking with Miss Flanagan. He was appreciative and acknowledged the role Sen played, Sen Bio played in preparing him, motivating him, overall helping him with his path. He walked over to me and again said how he enjoyed our class. Then he said to me the following words. Mr. Coolius, I really liked your class. And I don't know if you remember this, but one day a fan fell and you yelled at me because I was standing by it and you thought I had done something to make it fall. I didn't touch the fan, end quote. <laughs> words in the falling fan. To say I was mortified didn't capture it. And I'm sure I had yelled at him, words. And Ali remembered this. He remembered this event and my yelling words eight years later. He remembered a lot 
and hopefully that's the only negative about our class stuck with him, but still remembered eight years later and somehow important to him to tell me and certainly important for me to listen and hear his words. Probably around the same time, up in the 310 corridor, I allowed myself to become embroiled in a yelling match with a well-known hall walker standing by the girls' restroom across from 310 on her phone. Now this was my free period and the last thing I wanted to deal with. Sure enough, we power struggled for a good minute, both yelling, both stubborn, and in the middle of it all, she looked at me and said, quote, you are the teacher here, end quote. Words. Angry as I was, my instinct knew what she was saying, she was right. Words, mine and hers. And I still hear her words years later. Around the same time, busy time. <laughs> During a calmer conversation with a young man, he said the following to me about respect. Quote, Mr. Coolius, I will respect you if you respect me, end quote. More words. This is not how I was taught or brought up. In my world, certainly you respected the adult regardless. Yet somehow what he said resonated with me, although very foreign to what I believed. I tried his advice and slowly, not so slowly, saw it kind of work. Again, a different mindset for me, my own challenge, haunted by words that did make sense. As I thought about his words, I realized this is exactly how I approach and have for many years people along my path. For those who I sense respect me, I easily respect them in turn. And the opposite is true. I do not respond well to feeling disrespected. I know few who do. Although respect is somewhat subjective experience, I believe there are commonalities of what it means that most of us would recognize. <clears throat> On February 14, a 2009 graduate of Sun, Luis Aguilar, was senselessly and tragically shot and killed. Among other things, he was the father of a six-year-old son. Much has gone through my head since hearing about his death. Oddly, one of the things I have wondered is whether a fan ever fell, and I yelled at him. I pay tribute today to Luis and his son, who will never again hear his father's words. I have mellowed over time with my yelling in class, and I think about many of the words that I have heard. In my almost 20 years at Sun, the students have taught me much with their words, spoken and written, and their personalities and actions. With each young student I meet, I realize how much more I have to learn and hear words. I look forward to hearing many more, and I will do my best to listen. Thank you.